for this season. I don't know if it's just me, but what is it about Disney and Christmas that just seem to go so well together? Hit the like button if you love a Disney Christmas. And if not, let me know what your favorite Christmas theme is. But I guess both Disney and Christmas just have that magical feel to them. So in this video, we're gonna do a Disney Christmas themed puzzle. And this one is actually not in any of my haul videos, but was gifted to me by my husband. See, here's the thing. He totally had the nerve to send me a text message with a picture of a beautiful Disney themed holiday puzzle, knowing that I was gonna say, yes, I need to have it. So that's what I said and he was like, done. So we are going to be starting the Christmas festivities with this beautiful puzzle from Disney's Thomas Kincaid Studio. And this puzzle is called Cinderella Bringing Home the Tree. It is 1,000 pieces and is 26.6 by 19 inches when it's completed. And this one comes with a puzzle poster, which is too exciting because I love this image already. And this one is by the company Seiko. I hope I said that right this time. And I really appreciate that one of you guys reached out to me and told me that I've been saying it wrong this whole time. So here's to hoping that I've said it right this time. If I'm still saying it wrong, then that makes me quite pathetic. But anyways, now first impressions when I look at this image. I mean, come on. If you don't love this image, then I don't know what's wrong with you. For one, it's Thomas Kincaid. So this image is absolute perfection to me. The lighting is amazing. The details of all the trees, the house, the water, the sky. I'm in love. We got the prince and Cinderella. They just got there with their tree and presents. They're coming to visit me. You know, this is my cottage that they're visiting. I don't know what they're saying, bring, Cinderella bringing home the tree. She's at my house. Me and Cindy go way back. I don't know. I kind of feel like they should have called this puzzle Cinderella bringing the tree to Mandy's house. Why would... That can't be her house. You have the castle in the background. I mean, isn't that where she moved to? That has to be my house. I mean, look how cozy it looks. You have the fairy godmother doing godmother things in the background. You have Jack and Gus Gus towards the front there. We got the bird friends. Look, you even got Lucifer behind the sled looking all creepy and stuff. Oh, even creepier, you have the ste you have the stepsisters hiding in the bushes. That's weird. What else do we got here? There's always some sometimes you find some strange Easter eggs or some strange Things going on in the Thomas Kincaid studio images, if you look really closely, you gotta find them because they're such small details, but usually you'll find some things in there. Um, I can't quite make out what I'm seeing towards the back there. Is that Cinderella's dog drinking from the river? I think so. And the, oh my goodness. Even creepier, you have the evil stepmother hiding in the trees. I don't know, this is kind of creepy, don't you think? What's the matter with these ladies? Do they got nothing else better to do? This is very strange. This went from a festive looking fun image to a very strange, creepy situation. Nonetheless, this image is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to put this together. Now, I can already tell what's gonna be hard in this image. I know the sky is gonna take me some time to complete. We have um, the snow. The snow obviously is all white and you have different tones in the snow. So that's gonna be a bit tricky, I think. I'm pretty sure at some point I'm gonna have to change my sorting midway as well. You know, the house is an easy detail. We have the Christmas tree. That should be fairly easy to be honest. We have the sleigh, we have the characters in here. But other than that, I mean, it's gonna be fun. I'm already excited about it, but I'm also kind of feeling like this is gonna be quite a challenge. Aside from the fact that it's 1,000 pieces, you got a lot of areas that are kind of the same colors and tones and details, so this is gonna be interesting. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of go over what I'm doing along the completion process, tell you which areas were difficult, which ones were easy, how I went about completing certain sections of the puzzle, and kind of like my I guess tips, I'm not an expert, but you know, kind of give you like my sense of how I kind of go about completing puzzles. And hopefully one of my ideas can help you complete your puzzle. We're all here to help. All right, enough chatting. Let's get this open and let's get started. All right, we're not gonna get too crazy getting into this unboxing since we've done several of these Disney Seiko puzzles before. I already cut this off to kind of save time. Okay, we have our puzzle bag and hallelujah. 
our puzzle poster. Ugh, too exciting. All right, that's gonna be super useful as we complete this puzzle. Gives me some reference. All right, doesn't look to be too much puzzle dust in the bag. Got some nice big pieces here too. Let's open this up. We've worked with this before. Nice image print. Let's see what the glare is. Yeah, we're going to get some glare on this. That's typical. Anyways, guys, I'm too excited to start it. So let's get going. So I'm a sorter. Puzzle tray number one had edge pieces. Number two had sky pieces. Number three had pieces that had details like the sled, Cinderella, the prince, and so on. Another tray had water. The next I put what looked to be the trees. I had a tray for purple pieces. There was another for fairly dark pieces. And the last one had pieces that resembled the snow. And through my time sorting, I knew at some point that I would need to resort at least one or two more times. But if you have the space or the patience for that matter, you can sort each tray even further in the beginning. So after that, was done I started with the edge pieces and I do this 99.9% .9 of the time then as soon as that was done I went straight to the tray with the detailed pieces and tried to quickly sort it out a little further on my puzzle table and with having the edges in place I'm kind of able to map out where certain details go within the framework so after I did my second sort, I started piecing together Cinderella, the prince, the sled, the house, all the pretty obvious details, and then I moved on from there. And that was when the real challenge started. Overall, I found the darker pieces much harder to solve because with the lighter pieces, you're able to see the differences in colors and tones much easier. Now, something that I have been doing recently is I've been putting together sections of the puzzle outside of the frame. And I did this either on one of my empty puzzle trays or on the side of my table. And then I would add it to the rest of the puzzle. And this actually really helped me when I had issues with lighting and when using the tray I was able to bring it a lot closer to my face so it was much easier to see. the only one who does this but I hate when I have a mess of pieces all over my table and this always happens to me no matter how much I try to keep it organized and obviously it happens as I'm resorting or grouping together common pieces but anyways about three quarters through my puzzle I did a full resort of what I had left on my trays and whatever mess I had on my table and this time it was by puzzle shape now this particular puzzle set had about overall I'd say eight general types of shapes and they still had some differences but it was good enough to at least get me to the finish line a lot quicker, especially for the sky and the bottom section of the image. Now a couple of negatives with this puzzle set and I guess this is just a signature Seiko thing but I did have that same issue again with popping pieces. I'd put a piece in place or pull one out and the ones around it would just flutter on the table. It was annoying, but I have to say for this particular one, it wasn't as bad as my Snow White puzzle. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. 
There were some glare issues, but to be honest, with the overall tone of the color on the puzzle image, it wasn't that bad, honestly. Now, on a positive note, I was very surprised to find all of my pieces in very good shape. Previously, I've had issues with the images peeling off the puzzle piece, and that wasn't the case with this one. And really, you cannot beat this image. This image screams Christmas. I mean, obviously, when you look past the fact that there's a creepy stalking situation going on here, I might have to have these women arrested for trespassing on my property. But overall, this puzzle was a lot of fun and challenging at the same time. This one took me about eight hours to complete. I really struggled making time for this puzzle. I'm sure with most of you, the holiday seasons are a very busy time for you. Well, now I can finally start decorating now that my tree has been delivered. Now for my next puzzle review, I'm thinking about trying out a different puzzle brand. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to hear about my experience with that. Well guys, I wish you all a safe, happy holiday season, and I will see you in the next one.